seen Honey. We've all seen the posters, but nobody has seen Honey the Cat. Nobody. Until last Thursday morning, when Miss Colette Pacine swerved her car to miss Honey the Cat as she drove across a bridge. Well, this bridge, now slightly damaged, is a bit of a local treasure and even has its own fancy name, Pont de Flac. Now, Colette, that sounds like culotte. That's petty in French. And piscine means pool. Petty pool. Flac also means pool in French, so Colette piscine. In French, petty pool drives over the Pont de Flac, the Pont de Pool, if you will, to avoid hitting Mrs. French's cat that has been missing in Pontypool. does it mean? Well, Norman Mailer, he had an interesting theory that he used to explain the strange coincidences in the aftermath of the JFK assassination. In the wake of huge events after them and before them, physical details, they spasm for a moment, they sort of unlock, and when they come back into focus, they suddenly coincide in the weird way. Street names and birth dates and middle names, all kind of superfluous things appear related to does it mean? Well, it means something's going to happen. Something big. But then, something's always about to happen. It's not enough to say I'm working. It's not enough. Do you understand? Well, if you think it's enough, then maybe we're not thinking the same way. You know what I mean? Peter Hopper went peacefully in his own. He leaves Edna, his loving wife, for 51 years. You know, you know what? You know what, Rick? You know what? You're fired. You're fired. Good. Now we're both in the same boat. In her 84th year, she is survived by 11 children and 57 grandchildren. Oh, Jesus. Good morning, Laurel Ann. Loved your Isn't It Ironic this morning. Love, Norman Mailer. Thanks. You know, it takes a girl with big feet to dig old Norm. So, uh, she give me the good stuff. Ooh. Hey. Hey. 
<laughs> Let's make radio. Uh, hello, Ann. Do me a favor. Look up all the information you can on, on 911 calls, uh, how many in a 24 hour period, how many hang ups, that sort of thing. Okay. And uh, thanks. Let's make radio. drum for you all morning. I'm Grant Mazzy, and as always, I'll be taking no prisoners. Now, mmm, I got my coffee here. And take a look outside. I'd say that's our top story for today, folks. Now, I had uh, a strange experience on my way into work this morning, and I'd like to get some advice from you people later on. When do you call 911? Think about it. I should mention our producer, the lovely and talented Miss Sydney Breyer, is here. And lucky Laurel Ann Drummond. She'll be our technical cowgirl today. Now, I didn't know this. Maybe you did, but uh, this is news to me. Laurel Ann did a tour of duty in Afghanistan not too, too long ago. Well, you're right there, new guy. Everybody does know. She was the grandmaster of last year's fall fair. Yesterday's news. Hey. Oh, sorry, Laurel Ann. I wasn't the grandmaster. I was the homecoming hero. Okay. I'm sorry. I, okay, I'm very bad. Ooh, Sydney, Sydney, Sydney. Come on, girl. I'm sorry. It's okay. Well, you just heard an on-air apology from Sydney Breyer. She probably owes Laurel Ann quite a few more. Stay tuned. Now, in our top story today, a big, cold, dull, dark, white, empty, never-ending, blow my brains out, seasonal affective disorder freaking kill me now weather front that'll last all day. Well, maybe when the wind shifts later on, we'll get a little greenhouse gas relief from the industrial south. Hail Mary, Yevo, I walk, we go to Ken Loney in the sunshine chopper. Grant. Hey, Ken, how you doing? How, how are things in that bird up there? Are you going to stay in that bird up there during the storm? Yes, sir. Yes, sirree. Well, that can't be safe. Is that safe, Ken? Well, I'll be up here, Grant, on storm watch, watching all the routes in and around our region. Really? Really, yep. Okay, Ken. Boy, I wouldn't want to be a bird if this storm hits the way Don't it's supposed to. Girl, well, folks, hey, Grant, in and out of the region, and leave Ken alone. Go slow, folks. We do have a tractor. I think he's just concerned. Thank you, Ken Loney. Breaking news out of Caesarea this morning. Come on, boy. There we go. Breaking news. The Ontario Provincial Police are reporting a major bust of a significant grow operation in a quiet cul-de-sac in that town. Constable Howard Ng says it's a sign of things to come. These uh, operations in suburban small-town neighborhoods are the grow method of choice. And supply you smoke pot, sir. Yes, I do. You get, don't make global warming jokes. Well, I didn't make a joke. I quoted the Bible. There are no jokes in the Bible. <laughs> Speaking of the Bible, we are in a church, not a dungeon. Thanking you, Constable Howard Ng of the Ontario Provincial Police. You know, our local pot growers are engaged in a deadly serious business. Deadly uh, booby traps protecting their operations from 
prying eyes. Landmines have been found in backyards. Holy Grant? They have vicious attack dogs and enough ammunition to arm a small country. Now, these are family neighborhoods, folks. If Junior throws a ball through one of their windows, he's just liable to trigger a death squad. What are you doing? My producer said he's talking in my ear. Luckily, you can't hear her. Okay, nobody cares, Grant, about Sydney your says nobody cares. She, Maybe she's right. The closures after the billboard. But I need I you to do the I think you do care, Region. Taking no prisoners. You know what that means? It means full disclosure, whatever the no, consequence. Disclosure, Grant. School closures. Really? I need you am I? School closures, I that's really? what people need. This is Radio 660, The Beacon. Hey, you can't just cut me off like that. Jesus. Okay, you know, Grant, the whole full disclosure shtick works better in a bigger context. Well, actually, it's what got me fired. Well, there's that, too. The thing is, is that small towns, they already come without prisoners. It's called gossip, and it's way ahead of you. No, no, Sydney, I'm not talking about gossip. I'm talking about building a relationship with my listeners. You know, shaking them up a little bit. Okay, we do news, weather, sports, local spots. That's what I need you to do. Mm. Wait, what the hell do you think you have to disclose to us? Anyways, I mean, what is this that you think... We need to hear from you. I don't know. Well, <clears throat> actually, I do know, Sydney. I am trying to piss a few people off because that's how it's done. Simple as that. You see, a pissed-off listener is a wide-awake listener, and he ain't gonna change the station. In fact, he may just call his pissed-off brother and get him to listen, too. And then his pissed-off brother, he might call his pissed-off, I don't know, preacher. And that, Lady Briar, is how to build a loyal, listening audience. Oh, okay, well, I, that all sounds perfectly pleasant, I'm sure, okay? Um... You know, Grant, you're first rate, and you're doing a first rate job. But just let me tell you something. Small towns. They're 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 fiercely proud places with with proud people, people who need to know if the school bus is coming. And so if you come in here with your take no prisoners this, and you're pissing everyone off that, people are just gonna think you're a dick. Embarrass and alienate. Yeah. Okay, I said okay. Sorry, just the reality. Okay, uh, Grant, I, I, I want your maziness. Okay. I hired your maziness. Okay. I want the maziness. I just need the maziness to come in a little slower, a little more get to know you, a little, a little slower. Yeah, I get it. I'm not stupid. That's, that's not what I meant. I wanted to hear what he was going to say. Come on, he's just gonna talk about himself. Okay, Pontypool, good morning. You know, I want to talk to you about something that has been uh, bugging me all morning. stop sign at Drum and Main, and it's 6.30 in the morning, it's cold, and it's dark, and suddenly, this woman appears out of nowhere, she gets out of the she's babbling something, but I, ca I can't understand her, I can't hear her, I don't know what it is, and then, poof! to the grant this morning. I'm sorry, what? Has Mrs. Tripp called in yet? 
No. That's weird. Mrs. Tripp never, ever, ever misses a day. And where's Roger? It's almost 10. Where are those? Crank gave us Valentine's. You can put him up somewhere. You know, he, he's doing okay. So, okay, sweetheart, I'm gonna call Mrs. Tripp. Something's coming in on the radio. Roger, where are you? Code 48 in progress at the fish huts. Sydney, Sid! Okay, so what's Code 48, Marilyn? It means we have a hostage situation. There's nothing on the wire, so I'm gonna key in right off the police radio. Oh, really? There's nothing on the wire? Okay, so let's not do anything with this yet. Yeah, no, I'm not getting anything either. Whatever you do, don't feed this into Grant yet. Oh, shit. Yeah, Grant, it's uh, Gordon calling. Uh, I just want to throw this idea out there about the nine, uh, the 911. What if you had another number that was, I don't know, like 912 or something that was not for total emergencies, so if you had a, get a bit of a gray area, and uh, you weren't sure whether you wanted to call 9-1, you call 9-12. I, I, I just have a feeling it might catch on. I think some people might, you know, uh, take to. Good. That's a great idea. You should be running the world. Ponty Pool, my Ponty Pool. We interrupt our call-in segment to bring you breaking news out of our area this morning. Out on Sandy Hook and Wilmart, we have a hostage situation. Two men are holding a van load of people at gunpoint. The van is apparently towing a fishing hut. Sporadic gunfire has okay, been reported. Okay, lose the story, Grant. We're going, to, Ken Loney. We're going to Ken Loney. We're going to the McCormick Sunshine Chopper. The no one knows as yet what these hostage takers want or whether or not uh, they even know drunk, the people in the van. They're all drunk, Grant. It's the end of ice van. fishing season. But this being the end of ice fishing season, ice hut removal time, the chances that everyone in the ice this morning is drunk is a very distinct reality. Drunk ice fishermen, dare I say... Drunk policemen, drunk officers of the law, drunk Ontario Provincial Police. <laughs> this is not yet confirmed by our sources, of course. But police, possibly drunk, are reporting that the hostage situation has resolved itself. They have two suspects in custody, both unarmed, as it turns out. And the three people they were holding have, in fact, fled the scene. One can only hope that breaking news theme music will accompany this story at some point. There we go. Oh, the state of drunkenness has leveled off to acceptable levels this morning as Buddy Bob Roseland and Dead Eye Derek McCormick, OPP Pontypool Division, have Wrap contained up, the Grant. hostage situation. We'll be back with updates as the situation hiccups. We now go to Ken Loney in the Sunshine Chopper for a little perspective on your morning drive. Keep an eye out for crazy ladies in the snow and remember, wherever you're headed, get there safe. <laughs> Come on. Maybe we're going to learn to laugh at yourself sometimes. <laughs> story's not funny. Derek McCormick is an alcoholic. Bob Roseland is an alcoholic. They're trying to keep their jobs. Oh. Derek's my brother-in-law. Ex, ex-brother-in-law. Ouch. Grant? Mm. Ken Loney's not in a chopper. What? The Sunshine Chopper is Ken's Dodge Dart. He plays sound effects. Ken sits up on a hill for his aerial view. And people are thrilled to have him up there in the sky, flying around in his Sunshine Chopper, even though. Oh, man, I bet they are. Okay. Okay. Sid. I hate winter. <laughs> Everybody does. No, not like me. These late winters, I feel like I'm living in the basement of the world. It's so cold. 
and so dark. Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. Well, you're gonna be, you're gonna be okay. Oh, and Grant. I I'll tell you what. When the whole fish hut story gets confirmed. We'll bring it straight to you right away, okay? And it's yours. Uh, even if it's not legitimate, you can do your whole take no prisoner thing, okay? And you'll find it funny this time? I'll find it as funny as I did the last time. I'll let you. Arabia cast coming in, so we're gonna brighten up the day with that. Laura Land here. Okay, okay. It's Ken Money. Hey, Ken. Oh, Ken. God, slow down. Yeah. Ken, where are you? Okay. Ken, slow down. Slow down. And, and how many? Okay, Ken, just a second. Okay, wrap up Pontypool Corner, Grant. We have a big story breaking. Listen to me, keep it hard. Says here, Ken, just a second. They'll have a cab sitting in the lot all night. Big fucking dough double bill this weekend, so I'll check it out and make sure it's right that they're both at the same time. But that's what it looks like. We have breaking news out of our region this morning. It appears. It seems that a large group of people have gathered outside the offices of Dr. John Mendez. It appears to be a protest of some kind, and officials are describing the crowd as unruly. Now, Dr. John Mendez, you may recall, he was, uh, he was under investigation for writing unnecessary prescriptions. We have an exclusive live report from Ken Loney in the in the sunshine chopper. What can you see there, Ken? Grant, I am, I'm watching hundreds, literally hundreds of people packed in and around this building, and it, it looks pretty odd from up here. They, they seem to be uh, uh, trying to cram themselves inside. Oh. Whoa. What's happening, Ken? Ken, do you see any police? Is anybody trying to restore order um, down there? No, no, I don't see. Wait, 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 wait. There's a convoy of trucks, military vehicles. Where did they come from? What the hell? There's helicopters. Uh, there's a helicopter at like 2 o'clock and running. Uh, oh, shit. I gotta, I gotta back up out of here. Okay, Ken. Ken, get safe. Yeah, yeah, just, just try to get out of there. The road is blocked. <laughs> uh, there's definitely fatalities here. Uh, down there, uh, people have, have just died, Grant. I, I don't know what the hell has just happened. Well, we're, uh, we're gonna have to see if we can, uh... Grant? Ken, we're... Ken? Are you there, Ken? Okay, we've got nothing on this, We've got to get some information on what is clearly happening. Guys, this is five Not kilometers from here. more than three, uh, five kilometers from the station itself. This is Don't what we say have. a lot, Grant. We, we need to get this confirmed somehow. Something has happened at a doctor's office here in Pontypool involving a possible riot. I can't get through the OPD. Clearly something has happened so. here in Pontypool. Can we, we've lost Ken. Go to break. Go to Ken recap, Grant. Can you describe what he saw or at least what he thinks he saw? You know, the French philosopher Roland Barthes once described trauma as a news photo without a caption, and that, folks, is what I think we have here now. Get Ken back. We're trying. We're trying on getting Ken back. We're trying to reach the police. But, Grant, we still have nothing on the wire on this entire story. 
Loreline and I are going to work the phones. We're going to work our sources. We're going to try to find out with something solid we can put on the air. Okay, and what do you want me to do? Okay, well, um, Lawrence and the Arabians have, a, have come all this way. Yes, Tony. You've got to be fucking kidding me. Grant, I don't need you to be a problem right now. But Sydney, Sydney, we got the hook, and you can't just cut the line like that. Look, I just need you to do your job. These fine people, you're going to interview them, and then they're going to sing a song. Sydney, do you really think that this is what our audience is expecting to hear from us right now? So Laurel Ann and I will dig up a story on this that we can put on the air. Thank you. Okay. Okay, fine. Let's do it. Find out how the fuck rehearsals are going in fucking Arabia. Come on, gang. Come on. The Nefu Desert is a sand filled ear. If you fall off your camel, it cannot hear. The Nefu Desert is a sand filled ear. If you fall off your camel, it cannot hear. But I can hear Listen the to this, boy. Lying in the night, we need the boy's life to prove that we are right. This is one of the I can hear him sleeping still in the sand. I must save him so a lesser man will understand. The children know this is not about a British war. Okay, well, something's definitely happened. We can't just leave this. We can't go back on the air without something solid. Floraland, find me somebody I can put on the air. Well, I've got Elaine Freethy on, too. She's hysterical, but she seems to be in the middle of things. Okay, I'll see if you can calm her down, see what she's got. Why is there nothing anywhere on this? These are uh, Bedouin girls. Grant, we're trying for eyewitnesses. We'll have somebody for you when your singers are done. Are we dead? Are we sleeping? This is Osama Bin Laden. Warm from the sun. Are we dead? Are we sleeping? I will wake the fallen boy. I will not forsake a trust. I will reach back across the dunes and stir the desert's heart and fill it with your blood. It is a sacred trust to fill it with your blood. Fuck you, Rick. That's it. Okay, now that was... Tony Burgess, Maureen Hinkle, Nancy Freethy, Jay Pullman, and Colin Pullman singing The Neffwood Desert. I can't remember how it ends. I can't remember how it ends. How what ends, Farage? It just keeps starting over and over and over and over, and it's not called The Lawrence. And the table, is it? Not anymore, no. Something very weird going on with our uh, girl Farage there. Okay, you were great, Grant. You did your job, and... Didn't you hear her? Yeah, I know. I know you really wanted to stay with the story. I, mean, I needed you to buy us some time, and I appreciate it. I really do. So I have something now, and I'm tossing it all back at you. Okay, great. What do you got? Okay, so there's still nothing anywhere on the wire regarding this mob scene, but I've got ten eyewitnesses in town. We're going live with Steve Van Denzen. That's great. Fuck the wire if we got eyes. Okay, keep it hot, Grant. Girl, you got it. Hit me. Your beacon on the region. You're listening to me. Any word from Ken? Nothing, Grant Massey. Welcome back, folks, to our developing story where it appears that hundreds of people have been involved in a riot in and around the offices of Dr. John Mendez. You heard our own Ken Loney describe the violent scene. We now go live to eyewitness Steve Van Denzen. Steve. Steve. Steve Van Denzen. 
Okay, I, I'm afraid we've lost the signal from uh, Steve Van Denzen. We'll try and return to him later. But uh, we have just had a report from a Pontypool resident that confirms indeed a mob was spotted earlier today headed through town, headed toward the offices of Dr. John Mendez. Apparently they were moving... And uh, they, uh, they are, we're still waiting Shit, to learn exactly what motivated this crowd, this, uh, this mob, uh, to organize in a seemingly Grant, spontaneous I think are fashion. With us. You know, it's, it's very difficult at this moment to get a fix on what has happened, but clearly, well, you heard our own reporter, Ken Loney, earlier. I don't know, Greg. I don't know. We can't get Ken back on the line. We are still trying to uh, get Ken fucked. back on the line. I don't line. know what's going on. CLSY. Can you slow down? I can't understand what... CLSY. Okay. Oh, hello? We have also learned that some of the perpetrators are speaking in bizarre ways. They're babbling in ways that no one understands. We don't know if this is a way uh, of trying to terrorize people. We don't know. Hello, CLSY. I'm sorry, what did you say? We still do not have an official version of these events. Okay, it sounds good. But it has been reported that up to 75 people are sounds dead. Sounds honest. It is honest. And uh, at least twice that I have number CBC are injured. and CFRB on the line wanting to talk to you. We now take you to Constable Bob Rosalind of the Pontypool unit of the OPP. He's on the line live. Constable Rosalind, what's happening out there? At 7 o'clock this morning, our office is in. trying to get into the elderly woman's room, and this woman has since died from incidental injury. Okay, Grant, apparently these people were chanting something. It's a, a little creepy, chanting something. Final, and uh, what were they chanting. saying? Well, they were repeating things this woman was saying, and she's all senile, so she's babbling about Hitler and some hurricane. Crazy talk. Her get out, Grant. Her. Okay, thank you, Constable Rosalind. Now, we are also hearing about a herd... Well, that's how it's being described. A herd of people uh, near the edge of the forest, near Highway 26 in Edenvale. Uh, where's Edenvale, Sydney? It's northwest. Uh, now, Edenvale is northwest of us, and also between here and there in hey, Felston, a couple with their two young children have been trapped in their car under a mountain. Okay, apparently, Grant, I'm being told people. by Rachel Jones that these people I were imitating windshield wipers. This is what's being reported the sound of windshield to us. Wipers. Um, uh, the police yeah, say that they haven't been able to uh, actually see the car in over an hour. Can I be for a they sound like bugs. Sydney, I've got BBC World on the line. BBC. There are a growing number of eyewitness accounts, but we still have had nothing official. No, uh, no press conference uh, has been held, and we have Grant? no official statement. I've got Nigel Healing for you. What? Yeah, Nigel Healing from the BBC. Don't talk to me. Talk to him. Listen, our air, their air. They want to go live. Let's just do it. We are talking to Grant Marzi, the news radio anchor from Pontypool, Ontario, in Canada, who broke this story. Mr. Marzi, are you there? Yes, Nigel, hi. Mr. Mazzi, is it true that French-Canadian soldiers have set up roadblocks preventing people from leaving and entering your area? I haven't heard Canada? anything about this guy. I don't think he knows what he's talking about. And if so, does this have anything to do with your country's history of separatist terror groups? Well, uh... <clears throat> Nigel, um, none of that is true. Um, the military... Uh, of course, is is rumored to be involved, and uh, of course the police are responding as we speak. But uh, from what we can tell, there's nothing organized, um, nothing political, uh, certainly not terrorist or or, or separatist. But uh, Mr. Mazzi, this certainly looks like an insurgency of some kind. That large groups of people are involved, uh, but. Uh, if it's not organized, as you say, and it's not political, then can you help our viewers uh, at home understand exactly what it is we've been reporting on? <laughs> He's good. Uh, Nigel, 
The honest truth is that no one has officially come out ahead on this. Uh, we simply do not know. There you have it. A series of strange riots and violent mob scenes in rural Canada that no one, I repeat, no one can explain. Meanwhile, reports persist that French-Canadian riot police have been called in to crush this insurgency. Oh, fuck you, Nigel. He, he knows nothing. Where are you? Okay, I'm gonna pass you to Sid. I've got Ken. Ken. That was Nigel Healing from our affiliate station, BBC. We now go to Ken Loney, live in the field in Pontypool. Our reporter, Ken Loney. Ken, Ken, are you there, Ken? Uh, yes. Yes, I'm here. Uh, I said someone. I'm, I'm not safe here. Not safe where, Ken? Oh, no, don't say I'm where he is in case something the happens. The grain silo. I'm near the train tracks. It's a big silo, not the little ones. I ran here from the entranceway of the Imacon National Park. They came after me. You, you gotta send police. There is no contacting the police, Grant. There is no reaching the police. Hey, can you tell us what happened? What's happening there, Ken? Look, I'll, I'll tell you this. I just saw... I've seen things today that are gonna ruin the rest of my natural life, Grant. And I'm, I'm scared. I'm scared. Ken. Ken, listen to me. Um... It sounds like you're okay where you are. So don't move and you just stay there and we're gonna... Like animals and some of them are naked and... They're like dogs. And their eyes. That look, it's just a startled, kind of wild... Uh, uh... Oh, God, Grant. Oh, okay, Ken, listen, no, no, listen. No, 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 you don't understand. I'm looking... Uh, through a little door. There's a little door at the base of the door. Some kind of uh, cat door or something. And I can I can see the uh, lunge. Just, okay. Let me move so I can see the... No! Oh! Look out! Oh, God! They're, they're pulling two people out of a van. No! Who are they, Ken? Who are they? <laughs> It's Grant. Are you are you injured and, and have you been hurt? No. No. I'm just lying here. I'm in the dark. It it crashed through the wall. It was uh, Mary Galt's boy. Her, oh. her big teenager, Jesse, or, or Jesse. Jake or something. It was him. He uh, he had no hands. The kid had no hands. Hey, Grant, let's stop this now. What's he doing now? Not in the air, Grant. I'm not going to listen to somebody get killed on the air. He's looking at me. I think he can't move. I, I must have uh, broken some bones. I, I can see his eyes. He can't move. I, wait, wait. I think he's... No. Hang on. Ken, whatever you do, don't go near him.
limiter les chars comme le mien ou un amarin, par un bébé avec des enfants en bas âge. Discours rhétorique. Merci de ne traduire pas cette annonce. What the hell was that? Ken? They cut into our signal. Ken? Do we still have Ken? Uh, no, we've lost Ken. We've lost Ken, folks. We are working on a translation of, uh, uh, of the message we just received live on the air. It's something about avoid family members, talk only, talking to babies, it's crazy shit. However, working on a translation. Okay, I got it. It's on your screen. Okay, we have the translation. Now, I'm going to read this, reminding our listeners that the source has not yet been identified and early analysis has identified this as possibly a hoax of some kind. And I remind you that the source was not us, and indeed, we do not know the source. For your safety, please avoid contact with close family members and restrain from the following. All terms of endearment. And rhetorical discourse. For greater safety, please avoid the English language. Please do not translate this message. What do you got? That was Bob Roseland. He said that we have to stay inside. Pony pools under quarantine. Everybody has to stay inside at all times. Hello, hello. Yeah. Hello, is it? Did you get that? Ken? Did, did you get? I'm yeah. sending you some audio with my phone. Oh, thank God. Ken, are did, you there? Did you get that? No, Ken, I didn't uh, get it. I didn't. I don't get anything okay, right okay, now. Okay, okay, let's. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try that again. Uh, okay, listen. And, and keep in mind, uh, uh, picture this. This is what you, you're about to hear is coming from Mary Galt's big teenage boy. He's, he's lying here in the dark. With his body, it's, it's broken to pieces, and his wrists, I, I can see them, they're stumps, they're not stumps, they're pointing up at his sides. No, and, and Grant, just, what are we doing? Listen, 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 listen. Is this actually happening, Ken? Uh, <clears throat> All right. That was our own Ken Loney. That was our own Ken Ken Loney. Interviewing a screaming baby coming from Mary Galt's eldest son's last dying gasps. What? I was a little baby, a tiny little baby. Hey, Grant, listen to this. BBC is going wide with the Mendez story. He just said, honey. He just said, honey, the missing cat poster. What? The honey, the missing... Honey, the missing cat, Grant.
in this funny city. Are you laughing? It's not a joke, Grant. I, I'm beginning to think this is not a joke. I, everything that I've got looks real. The cat? Nigel Healy said apparently. Nigel Healy said apparently. Can you fucking hear yourself? Who was Lou? Don't yell at me, Grant. Holder of over 50 US hats and the very types of. Oh. I'm sorry. Sid, you know, I'm having a lot of trouble here. Believe in this. I know, Grant. I know. Me too. Okay? I mean, if somebody pull my leg, are they, uh, like, uh, taking the piss out of me, you know? <laughs> I mean, it's some kind of stunt. Oh, there's some dead people. A pretty big number, I think. Look, I gotta get out of here, okay? I'm having a lot of trouble believing that this is actually happening, okay? So, uh, I just gotta get out of here for a minute. Grant, Grant, I just need you to sit back down. You stay there, okay? I need you in your chair. You need to sit back down. Okay, we've got crickets. Laurel Ann, go to pre-tape. What pre-tape? I don't care. Anything, just go to pre-tape. What, where are you going? Mrs. French's cat is missing. The signs are posted all over town. Okay, um, you know, I need you back in the chair, okay? Uh, no, I gotta, oh, man, I gotta go outside and, uh, take a look at, uh... Grant? Grant, I can't have dead air. Sid, does this have something to do with me? What are you talking about? This. I mean, why? Why are they carrying dead cat pictures, huh? Huh? I mean, this is me going crazy. You know, I need to feel that there's something solid. I need to confirm. I need to, to know that there's more happening to everyone than, than what's happening to just me, you know? Grant, come on. You! You are fucking with me! You are fucking with my head! And you! Don't you fuck with me! taken from this life in her 45th year by her beloved husband, Stanley, who left this world suddenly at the hand of family members Fiona and Michael, who then died at each other's hands in their 12th and 17th years, respectively. Janice Gwynn has departed from her abiding husband and by his own hand in the 34th year of her life, Jack Gwynn, survived long enough to add four names, Paul Heighton, 43, Alice Heighton, 42, Brenda Heighton, 12, and young Jesse Heighton, 10. To the list of passages before himself losing his life as a result of an accident. Greg Alwyn, 56, 
has been killed by Yolanda Owen, 61, who also removed Frida Owen, 81, Patsy Owen, 12, John Friedman, 33, Peter Stepp, 38, and Leslie Reed, 42, who had between them caused the untimely passings of Joel Froth, 67, Sandra Waden, 23, Tim Drummond, 17, Cynthia Drummond, 46, Darren Drummond, 51, and Alicia Drummond, 91. The Drummonds were survived on Cynthia's side by the Hinman family until shortly before noon today, when they were sadly removed from this world by a bus driven by the recently departed Brenda Lockland, 43, who was missed briefly by her husband, Gary, 37, now deceased. You're listening to In Memoriam on CLS Y Radio. David and Susan Verrier Jones, married 51 years, died suddenly in each other's arms by each other. You listening to this? Jason Zitkovich. Really trying not to. While in police custody. Shit. I left my cell phone in the sound booth. I want to talk to the kids. When he's got them, he turns his cell phone off or doesn't pick up or I don't know. He's a jerk. So, did anything um, this crazy ever happen to you in Afghanistan? No, sir. I believe the situation I brought back in my head. <laughs> Wait, what, do you, what do you mean? I don't really know. I'm going to go see if Mr. Mazzy's missing. <laughs> missing. Missing. In, miss, I mean, I mean, Mr. Mazzy. Mr. Mazzy's missing is in case he's not here. Oh, well, honey, is in the sound booth. Yeah, I know. I just okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. literally been crawling on my hands and knees throughout town all over and, and... okay oh don't, don't say anything okay oh boy she just started doing this um sorry uh i'm a doctor um we should step out laura lan laura lan honey are you okay no 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 no, 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 no. it's terribly urgent that we keep moving she'll follow our voices we have to uh what's that it's a sound booth lifeboat let's go Mr. 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 Mendez is missing Mazzy. No, no, I'm, I'm missing Mazzy. I have to. I... We just need to get a little bit of deep time ahead of her. Don't worry, she doesn't have a purpose. What's wrong with her? Hurry, hurry, hurry. Mr. Grant, Grant, Grant. Jesus. It's Dr. John Mendez. People are involved. Mendes. It's not organized and it's You're not the building that exploded. Yeah. And I think he probably has quite a story to tell. Doctor, would you like to have a seat? You mean on the radio? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I have the story you want to tell. No, guys, wait. I'm not missing anymore. I don't miss Mr. Mazzy. I think it might be a little bit more interesting than Nigel Healing, huh, Grant? What's going on? Your friend is sick. I've seen a lot of this lately. She doesn't know it yet, but she's hunting us. I don't miss Mr. Massey. I'm, I'm not missing anymore, Sydney. She doesn't look. Uh... Okay, come on. We can't just leave her out there. I want to talk to her, Grant. Put the no, sound no, no, on. no, no, no. Let's leave the sound sealed in here with us. She might lose track of where we are if she can't hear us. You are listening to The Beacon. We are holding our own here today, and we are taking no prisoners, friends. 
However, today we are those prisoners. We are tired and we are scared. But we have live with us Dr. John Mendez. Now, you may know him or you may recall our own Ken Loney's vivid account of the violence that took place when the mob destroyed his practice. Now, Dr. Mendez, we're looking to you. You've had some special experience with these, uh, with these events, and uh, we would like uh, any insights that you can provide. <laughs> Oh, she's rooting for voices. <laughs> this will grow vicious. I, I should mention that, uh, sadly, very sadly, our own homecoming hero, Laurel Ann Drummond, is right now experiencing some kind of dangerous seizures. I've seen this, what your friend is experiencing. Okay, can I? Okay. I've seen elements of this. She doesn't have a victim yet, so I'm not sure how this will end. I mean, a victim suicides, but the victim needs a victim to suicide into. I know this is horribly upsetting to you, and I'm sorry to be the bearer of such disturbing news, but I've seen Sydney. this violent behavior at my office all morning. Yeah, okay, we're going live. I've got Ken. Okay, thank you, Dr. Mendez. We are now going to our own reporter Ken Lone. He's live in the field. He's in the grain silo near Pontypool. Are you there, Ken? I'm here, Grant. Uh, Ken Lone reporting from inside the grain silo. Ken, we were very worried about you, Ken. I think I, I'm okay, but uh, the person that was in here with me, he has died. Uh, have you been there all this time? Yeah, I, I haven't moved, but you can hear uh, crowds from time to time passing by outside. Can you hear what they're saying? Are they saying anything? I have, yeah, you, you can hear them. A uh, group went by about an hour ago, and they were talking uh, about uh, U-boats. Um, well, they weren't talking, really. They, they were just sort of uh, chanting something about, uh, look out for U-boats, look out for U-boats, look out for U-boats. Were they all saying this, Ken? Yeah, yeah, all of them. It's a symbol of the disorder. A symbol of the disorder? You mean a symptom? It's a symbol. What's happening there, Ken? Do you need to get uh, someplace safer? No, no, that, that's not it. I, uh, I, uh... What's going on, Ken? It's gonna... It's gonna sound weird. I can't stop thinking. Do you have a sample? I'm sorry? A sample? Um, a, a sample of what? Uh, just a sample. I think a simple kind of sample. This is what I was saying. I need to... I can't stop some... Try to stay calm, Ken. That's what I'm trying to say. Grant, Grant. Ken? Yeah, I'm Ken? I'm just gonna try to, try to... Can you think? I can, I can, I can, yeah. Let's stick to simple questions, simple. Simple questions, simple, 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 simple. That's it, he's gone. This is what he is now. He's just a crude radio signal. Simple. He's seeking. I think it's time to say goodbye, Grant, to our man in the sunshine chopper. All right. Goodbye, Ken. Goodbye from all of us. Everyone listening. I hope you can hear me, Ken. Goodbye. He's gone. Well, I mean, he's gone somewhere. I'm so sorry, Sydney. Ken was, um, he was, uh, he was, uh, he was a real good friend of yours, wasn't he? No, he's, he wasn't a friend. Ken Loney was a pedophile. I mean, not really a, a pedophile. We just never let our kids go anywhere near him. It's just, it's just, I've known, I've known him 17 years. It's just, it's just such a long, long time. Shit. I 
wasn't a very good orbit. What's this now? Hmm. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, folks, um, we're still here, and, uh, the Laurel Ann has joined us again. And, uh, uh she's uh, looking worse. She, she looks like she's been trying to eat something. Stop. You sure she can't hear us? No, no, she can't. Can she read lips? Good question. Read lips. Why? No, I mean, that's a very interesting thing you just said. Can they read lips? Really? No. Uh, interesting how? How? Uh, I should uh, remind our listeners we are talking to... No. No, it can't be. It can't be. It's impossible. What's impossible, Doctor? It's viral. That much is clear, but uh, not of the blood. Not the blood, not in the air, not on or even in our bodies. It is here. It is in words. Not all words, not all speaking, but in some. Some words are infected. And it spreads out when the contaminated word is spoken. Oh, we are witnessing the emergence of a new arrangement for life, and our language is its host. It could uh, have sprung spontaneously out of a uh, perception. If it found its way into language, it could leap into reality itself, changing everything. It may be boundless. Maybe a god bug. Okay, Dr. Mendez, look, I don't even believe in UFOs, so I, I'm, I gotta stop you there with that god bug thing. Oh, really? Well, you know, that's very sensible because UFOs don't exist. But I assure you, there is a monster loose and it's bouncing through our language, frantically trying to keep its host alive. Is this transmission itself? Um... No, 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 no. If, if the bug enters us, it does not enter by making contact with our eardrum, no. It enters us when we hear the word and we understand it. Understand? It is when the word is understood that the virus takes hold. And it copies itself in our understanding. Should we be talking about this? What are we talking about? Should we be talking at all? Well, to be safe, no, probably not. Talking is uh, risky. And, uh, well, talk radio is high risk, so uh, we should stop. But uh, we need to uh, tell people about this. People need to know. We have to get this out. Well, it's your call, Mr. Mazzy. Let's just hope what you're getting out there isn't going to destroy your world. breathing. That's your top news story. Can't take your breath away if you're breathing. Breathe, breathe, Go breathe, to Muzak, breathe. Grant. Muzak. TN-14. Seems we're still talking. Should we uh, make our moratorium official? Hello. Here's your 
Here she comes. Hi, honey. Hi, honey. Hi, sweetie. Are you and Brandon? You and Brandon are okay? Oh, I miss you too so much, honey. I'll see you tomorrow, huh? That's that's great, honey. Oh, that's fine. Uh huh? Get your daddy there, honey. Can I talk to him real fast? Oh, honey, I didn't forget to call. I just couldn't get through, sweetheart. You know, she shouldn't be talking to anyone who calls. And no, sweethearts, please. She should be breathing more. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Just talking out loud. Just talking out loud. Hey, can I please put your daddy on? Your birthday today, Lulu. It's Valentine's Day, sweetie. It's not really a good time right now, sweetie. Can you just bite your daddy on? Happy Valentine's Day to you, Lulu. Happy Valentine's Day to you, Lulu. Because I love you. <laughs> So this is what happens when a victim can't find a victim. This is the fate they're trying to escape. Oh my God, that was impressive. Oh, oh, oh and, and, and singularly monstrous defies comprehension. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, breathe, breathe, breathe. Oh, here they come now. There must be hundreds of them pressed against the walls of this building. What we need is a flamethrower. Thought we weren't supposed to talk. Okay, yes, yes, yes. All right, all right, all right.
I looked at Sydney Breyer is alive. 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 We can breathe again. Sydney Breyer is alive. Sydney Breyer is alive. Sydney Breyer. It's only the English language that's infected. Oh, please, please. He just gave a Je ne quitte pas les enfants. Oui. Non. Oui. Non. Oui. Non. Tout va qu'il enfant. Pas moi. Ok. Ok. J'ai trouvé l'enfant. So? Tu as trouvé. Va trouver le docteur. Moi? S'il vous plaît. Non. I... Oui. I'm not gonna kill the doctor, no. 
Okay. Si le docteur attaque nous, je tuerai Tyr. Mais. Why don't you speak up? Rich. This what I hate. Continue. secret escape plan hidden in the words that Nigel said to you. <laughs> oh. Stop that!
understanding in us and our understanding. Sit. We're not talking. I'm drunk. This is how my last relationship ended. How do you stop understanding this? Oh, God. You're gonna eat me soon, aren't you? It's okay. You'll be the killer. I don't want to be the killer. Some Dr. Mendes said, you see, he said that understanding will work copies the virus. How do you, how do you not understand a word? How do you... Okay, you are talking a lot right now. How do you not understand something? How, something you understand automatically. How do you take a, you know, like a word? How do you make it strange? We are gonna have killers in here soon if you keep killing your own rules, Grant. Grant? Grant? I'll kill the killers. See, if not understanding what disinfects it. See, that's the question. If it disinfects it, then how, without distorting it, how do you do that? You kill the word that's killing you. Oh, you kill the word that's killing you. That's good. That's good. You repeat it. Yeah, I remember as a kid, I used to, uh, I used to repeat words over and over and over again until they were incomprehensible. You think that's what it is? Is that why they're repeating things? Is, is it some kind of immune system response? You have to kill. All the killing. Yeah, but it's a war because they repeat the word and then they still get sick. So how do you make it unrecognizable? How? In what word? Word. You're infected, uh, but we know the word. Don't say anything. Don't say anything. No, no, no. Stop. Stop. We know the word. Okay, kill isn't kill. Sydney, kill isn't kill. It isn't kill. Kill isn't kill. Kill isn't kill. Kill isn't kill. It isn't kill. Kill isn't kill. Kill isn't kill. Kill isn't kill. Oh, God, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, kill his boo. Kill his wonderful. Kill his, kill his loving. Kill, kill his kill his baby. Kill his, kill his money's garden. Kill his beautiful morning. Kill his everything he ever wanted. Kill his, kill his, uh, kill his kiss. Kill his, uh, kill his, kill his kiss. Kill his kiss. Kill his kiss. Is that it? Kill his kiss. Kill his kiss, 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 kill his kiss. What is kill? Kiss. What? Kill me. Seriously, what just happened? It just goes me. Yeah. No, I know, I know. Uh, I know. What just happened with all of them? Sydney. I think something big just happened. I think I just cured you. Sydney, this is big. This is huge. Where are you going? We gotta let people know about this. We just found a way out of this. Shit, Grandpa, you uh, listen to me. Where what are we doing? Oh, what are we doing here? Come on, girl. One last show. One last what? Grant! Grant, listen to me. We're not supposed to be even out here. What are we doing out here? It's not safe. Sid, we're gonna save the fucking world. Right now. How you feeling? Well, you don't even know that you did that or what you did or how you did it. L listen, Grant, stop! Listen, you're way ahead of yourself. 
We're okay, okay? We're okay. We're safe up there. If we just don't talk, we have to stay safe. What Mendez said. Let's make it easy. Shit, Grant, we shut up or die! People are already dying, Sid. And we've been playing music. Do we really want to provide a genocide with elevator music? I don't know what I did up there, Sid, but I gotta try. Because if I don't... What? Yeah. Oh, you're killing me, Massey. Okay, go, go, go. Just go. That French thing, uh, that French thing, he said, uh, he said, uh, terms of endearment and baby talk, okay? And uh, we got you over, we know how to clean that one up, right? And uh, what was the law and... I don't know, I don't know, I don't remember. Oh, uh, well, Ken Loney, he was saying, uh, sample, was that it, sample? Okay, we need a list, can you make a list? There's no time for a list, Grant, there's nothing, you just gotta confuse people, what, what do you want me to do? Okay, put me on, put me on, come on. You're on! Hello, Pontypool. This is Grant Mazzy here, and today... We set those prisoners free. So here we go, folks. Kill is kiss. Kill is definitely kiss. Now, sample. Sample is staple, sweetheart. Okay, too specific, Grant. Listen to me, folks. Everything is something else, okay? If you are saying happy, it means sad. Happy me? No, that's the opposite. It can't be that. Okay, it can't be that. Happy is handy. Happy's handy. Move things around, people. Just move them around. You have to stop understanding. Stop understanding what you are saying. Stop understanding and listen to me. Sample. Sample is a color. Sample is a color. Okay, no, Grant, no, Grant, you're number. making sense. Okay, if you if you say don't understand, it defeats the purpose. Okay, okay, here we go. The sky is a person. Laughter is walking. Yellow is crowded. Friends are verbs. Teeth like shitty haiku. are entering. I think we're on, but I don't think we're saving the world with shitty haiku. Okay, Christ, I gotta a critic. Help me out here. Cling! Cling! Intake! Trespass! Sniper! Swimming! Um, tomorrow! Fidelity! Monologue! Savage! Sausage! Ah, uh, tomorrow! Money! Ceiling! Uh, right. I don't know, Greg! Just listen to me. I said, listen to me. I think everyone's dead. <sighs> You're just killing scared people. It's what you always do. You're killing scared people. You are like dogs. You smell fear and you... Well, what the fuck happened today, folks? Someone took a buzzsaw to your middle and they pulled out a wheeling devil and they spilled it right across your anthill. But you know what, friends? We were never making sense. We were never making sense. And today, today when Armageddon leached out into your good, good, you know what? It's just another day. Another day in Pontypool. The sun came up. You did what you did yesterday. And it's exactly what you'll do tomorrow. Today's news, folks. 
Today's late-breaking, developing, just across my desk news story is this. It's not the end of the world, folks. It's just the end of the day. This is Grant Massey for CLSY Radio Nowhere. And I'm still here. Let's get out of here. Where are we going? I can't play by the establishment of rules any longer. My patience is worn thin. We're breaking the limits, stealing cars, leaving the world behind to figure out what they believe is black and white. But what about? What about? What about, what about? It's not a good anti-establishment way to begin a question. My name? My name, too. Johnny Dead Eyes. Hmm. Lisa the Killer. Where are we going, Johnny? To a new place that isn't even there yet. And then? Then we steal the loot and knock boots in the free world, baby. Okay. Okay, baby. <laughs> 